It is maintenance day. Every week, every department will do maintenance on the things that they take care of. But today is my day for maintenance, so I thought I would show you some of the things that I'm doing to just upkeep the mics as we go through the season. This is the kind of thing that I had no idea about, which makes sense, but also just had no idea about before I entered the industry. So I thought it would be something interesting to share. In no particular order, here are some of the things that I will be doing today. I have to clean the Phantom's mic because it is gross. The mic gets put underneath paint and makeup and prosthetic. So it is gross. I would rather be cleaning that than letting it build off and let it mess up the mic, you know? I have to relabel some names and some mics because they have come off just through wear and tear. I have to paint some mics. I have to do some touch-ups on the ear rigs and I have to do some touch-ups on skin tone and some of the hair on some swing mics. I'm going to do that first because it needs time to dry and we have a show in five and a half hours so I would like for those to be a bit more sorted. There are two performers who I take mics on and off of during the show multiple times and I've been finding that recoiling their slack is really driving me nuts so I'm going to find a way to stick all their slack together so that it's just one little boobity boop that will save so much time in those changes. I have to put a little bit of Hellman on a couple of mics and just in general check that they're all good. So let's do a thing. I also asked some people on Instagram if they had any questions about the show that I could answer while I was doing this. So I will answer some of those. Answer some of the questions that I got while I paint mics. If I could find the clip I just had in my hands, in my human hands. I said, Do you like my shirt? It's from the merch stand, it's so cute. What have you been looking forward to about the show the most and has it been fulfilled yet? I think so. I think uh, the experience of doing the show was what I was looking forward to the most. Actually, no, we're gonna get niche and sentimental and gross. The thing that I love the most about this show is walking around backstage, being able to hear the show. Any other production people, please tell me if you feel this, but there is something so romantic about walking around backstage and being able to hear the show, see things getting moved around. Something about that just touches my soul. There's a point in the show where I have an onstage cue and then at the top of The Phantom of the Opera, I am rolling a cable and walking through the stage area. And that moment, just five-year-old me would have thought that was the coolest, seven, would have thought that was the coolest thing in the world. I feel like the Phantom at that point, especially for this show where so much of the vibe of the show is about like being backstage and you know being in the opera house and being part of the cogs of the machine to then be a part of the cog of the machine is a really cool feeling. And also just to have opened the show, the tech and production and bump in period was so much work and was consuming and exhausting and I'm really proud of what we've accomplished. I'm proud of the show and I'm excited to now just like settle into it and you know, get to enjoy the show itself. Something else I'm really excited for is to see covers go on. I love getting to see people go on for the first time and that experience, especially once you've had a chance to see their work, see them in cover calls, see them in rehearsals working so hard to then get to celebrate that moment with them is a really, really special thing. So half yes, half no. Do you find the types of shows you do attract a type of person? I think automatically always, yes. Especially crew-wise, not so much, but cast-wise, absolutely, because they're cast for certain things. Like, for example, on Come From Away, the age range of casting within that show meant that a lot of the people who were in the company had families and everyone was quite chill. Everyone kind of showed up to work, did their thing, went home. Like, it was very family vibes. Poppins has such a huge age range within the cast. You know, you've got eight year olds and people in their 50s and 60s. So there's almost this like extra level of professionalism that is everyone holding each other accountable to be the level of those people while supporting each other. There's a lot of support offered to the people who are less experienced by the people who are more experienced. And across the board, I just found that that meant that it was the most beautiful, professional, kind, fun work environment that I've ever been in. Phantom is a really interesting show because the casting requires you 
to have ballet dancers, opera singers, and music theatre performers. So there is automatically a difference in a bunch of different people bringing together multiple different kinds of art forms, which is really cool. And I imagine that they learn so much from each other and also means that there are people who have been exposed to different kinds of work environments. Like a lot of the people in this show, if they're a dancer, maybe have never worn a mic before. They've never had to sing in a show before, even though they can sing. Like there's a really interesting collection of people that get hired for a cast of fans and I think it's a really fun mix. I really forgot how much I talk with my hands, so it's making talking while I am doing things with my hands. Very difficult. What is the most difficult thing about the show that is specific to the way the show goes? This show has a lot of people. There's a lot of people on this show. There are 22 ensemble members on stage. There are swings doing things backstage. There are nine leads doing things at all times. There's 60 something show crew on deck every day. We're also in a period where everyone is learning each other's plots and things. So there's even more people like shadowing backstage and the wing area here is limited for the amount of props and set pieces we have, which is so worth it because the show is beautiful but I think just managing space and that many people is probably a bit of a challenge. Why he got so many feels? I imagine you're talking about the Phantom. I wonder if there's a video that I should do about my feelings about or even like people who play these roles, their feelings about uh, the character themselves. I know this was probably a joke question, but I think I've been thinking about this a lot during this show run. So it's interesting that you brought it up and now I will be info dumping. The portrayal of the Phantom has been really like sexy and mysterious for a while based on like staging and character choices and costumes and the portrayal in the movie, which is what I guess most people have seen. And I think that we can forget, or at least I definitely forgot, the reality of this character's situation. He is completely excluded from society. He was rejected by his mother as a child, so he's got severe abandonment issues. He was traumatized as a child, but what I think is pretty obvious is that, you know, this man is alone and lives in the basement of the opera house by himself. The only person he seems to speak to or be around is Madame Giry, who is still also afraid of him. You've got someone who's been rejected from society, rejected by the people that should love them, has no family, no friends, is completely isolated from society, and his main inclusion into the world is watching a bunch of people interact in their life that he feels like he has no connection to, and then he finally fi has this one real relationship, which is his relationship with Christine. Like, no wonder he is so intense and so infatuated and obsessed with her. I would say that is why he has so many feels. You know, I think about the scene where Raoul and Christine are singing on the roof and the Phantom is watching them and he says, um, you know, I gave you my music and now how you've betrayed me. Like to him, that is a betrayal because that relationship is so important to him. Now she's in love with someone else. She has someone else as the main figure of her life when to him, it's her. Does that make Christine a villain? New. But I think it's an interesting lens to look at this character. So I don't think that was a serious question, but there was my info dump excessive answer. How are you surviving swapping batteries in between shows? That was Rude and that was Josh from Poppins because on Poppins we had batteries that lasted 14 hours and here we do not. Is this show better or worse than Hosh? I think it's impossible to even compare the two. I know it's technically the same show, but it's really not. Like the staging is completely different, first of all. The direction is completely different. Like the characters are portrayed in such a different way to the way they were on Hosh, or at least a lot of them are. And the costumes are different. The, the sets are obviously very different. Um, the environment of work is different. I just don't even think that they are comparable shows. And I imagine that a lot of the people who are also here who did Hosh as well feel the same. Like they feel like two completely different productions, which of course they are, but they barely even feel like the same show to me. This is a task that would have taken like 10 seconds if I didn't decide to answer questions while doing it. So I'm just taking a second to try and finish it up. I came in early for maintenance to allow time for me to take a bit longer because of these questions and filming. So I'm not stressed, but I am tired of doing this. So best meal from the green room. Uh, if you have never worked at the Opera House before, the Opera House has an amazing green room that has like a cafe 
cafeteria situation, it's a good time. Honestly, their wedges absolutely slap. I know that's a really basic answer, but they're wedges. I also had the soup yesterday and that was amazing. The soup was great. It was a sweet potato soup and it was so good. Will Phantom Tour, yes. So we're here for seven, eight more weeks and then we go to Melbourne. I will leave links for tickets in Sydney and Melbourne down below. What is your favorite part of the show? I feel like it's constantly changing, which is kind of the experience that I have whenever I work on shows because you fall in love with different parts of the show that you didn't think you liked. I, I find that, that there'll be songs that I didn't really appreciate and then now I do appreciate them. I used to think that all I ask of you was the lamest, most boring song in the world and now it's one of my favorites because it's just beautiful. Phantom of the Opera will always slap and it has an offstage singing bit, which one of my cues is to be there for. So I just stand amongst this giant group of ensemble who are singing and it's a really like powerful thing. I think as a show itself the managers scenes are my favorites because there's so much especially in this production and the way that this cast do it there is so much personality in the managers but as of my plot I think one of my favorite moments is a quick change after masquerade where I'm helping side stage to fix everyone's mics after they've taken their masks off just before it goes into a managers so I'm just chaotically swabbing people and fixing their mics and taking mics off and that is really fun. I also spend a lot of time backstage with a couple of cast members who I have a lot of cues with like Andy who plays Andre. I spend a lot of time with him and he is fantastic and we have great chats so I really enjoy those parts too. One of my other favorite parts of the show is just setting up and packing down with my team. They're the best so that is also very fun. I have to paint earrings. And this is the Phantom's mic. Let me show you what I'm trying to clean off, which I don't know if I'm going to be able to get all of it off, but I just want to try and not accumulate the grossness. I have been doing things to protect the top of the mic, like the capsule itself from the paint, but then I also have been soaking his grills in alcohol and swapping between two different sets of grills just to make sure that they are clear and will sound good. In most show situations, we would use a different mic if a cover went on for a role. There are three people on this show who play the Phantom, so if there would be three different Phantom rigs for each of them, uh, stock allowing. But I'm thinking because of the fact that the mic gets like this just through the process of it being used, that I'm better off for the sake of the mics and the fact that these will get reused when this show is done to a degree. I am better off sanitizing this one and using it on everyone until it breaks and then using a new one. Because if I don't have to try and clean this off of six different mics, that sounds like a great idea. I also can't get all of it off. <laughs> it's um, proving difficult. So those are my thoughts. I've definitely got it a lot cleaner. Oh my goodness, a lot cleaner. There are just some bits that are just tough. I wonder if Wham would have anything stronger that they've been using to clean this stuff off. I mean, I'm using 99% alcohol. I don't know what could possibly...